All right, now we are going to uh, try another problem. And uh, again, we are going to proceed kind of in the same way we did last time. Um, the only thing that's really different about this one is that we will, um, we will have a slightly different attack to do on the equation to get it written in, uh, in slope-intercept form. So I think uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this equation out so that we can play around with it a little bit. So we've got 3x plus 1 half y is less than 2. So the one thing I know is like the other one, this one is also going to be a dashed line when I do it because it does not have the line under it. So it does not include any of the points that are actually on this line, right? It'll, it will include, you know, the line will act purely as a boundary, um, but won't um, the points that are actually on the line won't be part of the solution set. So for this, what we're going to do first is, you know, remember we want to get to y equals mx plus b form. So if we're going to do that, we got to move this thing over first. So let's do that. We're going to subtract 3x from both sides, right? We're going to get 1 half y is less than negative 3x plus 2. I'm writing it that way right away because I would like it to, um, I would like it to be a little, uh, a little more uh, obvious, I guess, is the word I'm looking for when um, when we get it. So you know, it kind of looks like this, and I'm I'm I don't know. I like it when the the slope is the first number on the right side. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to multiply uh, we're going to multiply everything in this entire equation by positive two, and we're doing that because that's the reciprocal of one half. It will get rid of one half and make the coefficient in front of y one which is what we want. So we're going to multiply it by this first. So 2 times 1 half y is just y because your 2's cancel. Now we're going to multiply it by this. So we're going to put our inequality sign. And then 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. Basically, we're doubling everything, right? And then 2 times 2 is 4. So we have y equals negative 6x plus 4. So uh, now we're, we're good, right? So we got positive 4. We're going to go up to positive 4. We're going to put a dot right there. Okay, and then it's negative 6x, so that means we go down 6 units, right? If the slope is negative 6, that means that it's negative 6 over 1, right? So we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units, and then over 1. I'm going to put a dot right here. And then um, I am going to <laughs> attempt to, uh, let me see, I think I can... Yeah, I think I can do this. So let's do this. Let's see here. So we're going to go like this. Look at that, would you? All right. So uh, we'll put our, uh, our arrows on the end. So this means it is not including this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to include... Or, or, sorry, I'm not going to include. I'm going to test a point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test 0, 0. Whenever I can use 0, 0, I, I do. So I'm going to I'm going to take 0 0 I'm going to put it in this equation and I'm going to see if it works. So uh, let's let's do that. And let's use let's use a different color. So I'm going to put in so if I have the point 0 0, right? That means that instead of y I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it in for there. So 0 is less than negative 6 times and then again zero and then plus four all right well the reason i love using the origin is because you know zero is the magic eraser right so it gets rid of this and you get zero is less than or equal to four which is a true statement so what that means is that the side that included the point is is true so it gets shaded so we're going to shade this side that includes the point, right? It doesn't matter how you shade it, whatever. Just so you know, you you know what shade is. Some people like go all crazy on it and everything. So that's that's just kind of kind of the way this is going to look. Remember, uh, when when you're doing this, um, if it does include the line, in other words, if there were to be a line under it like that, then it would be a, a full solid line. It, it does not, but if it did, that would be the case. All right, so now let's look at our last example. 
example. So this last example is an application problem. All right, it says a recreation center offers various 30 minute and 60 minute art classes. The recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for art classes. Um, write an inequality to represent the number of classes that can be offered per week and then graph the inequality there, right? So what, what we're going to do is we're going to assign some variables and, and write this thing. So um, let's say, let's make X equal to the 30 minute classes, right? We'll say that's our 30 minute class, right? And then let's make, um, let's make Y a 60 minute class, all right? And so what, what this is saying, right, is, is if, we, if we add these up, we, uh, we have a number, then it should get up to 20 hours per week. So it can be 20 hours per week, but it can't be more. So that's going to be less than or equal to. So up to would be less than or equal to 20, right? That's the, you know, the, the classes, right? So when we write this, we have to be careful because... They want it, they want this in hours, and then they're giving the, us this in minutes. So if we convert, if we if we talk about 30 minutes, right, that means that's a half an hour, and then 60 minutes is one hour. All right. So when we write this now, we're gonna say, well, I know the number of of classes that are half hour long, which is x. So x is gonna be, you know, the number of classes, right? Number of classes and y is going to be the number of classes right so i know that the number of classes times the time for each which is one half added to the number of one hour long classes times the time for each which is just one should be less than or equal to 20. so let's rewrite this like like rational people right so we have one half x plus y is less than or equal to 20. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. If we want to get y by itself, let's just move this thing over, right, like this. And so you get y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 20. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, let's go up by twos on this graph. All right. And so let's say, um, let's, let's call this y. Right, we'll call this y. So this would be number of 60 minute classes over here. And this would be the number of 30 minute classes, right? So we're gonna go, this goes up by two. So I got two, four, I'm not gonna keep numbering it. Six, eight, we'll go 10, we'll go 12, 14, 16, 18, we'll go 20 is right here. So my y-intercept is 20. So I know I'm going to have a point right here on 20. And then for to figure out what's going on, it's it's negative 1 half, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's down 1 and over 2. Now the thing is, if you're going in increments of 2, you have to be careful of that, right? And we have to also figure out how we're graphing this. So we'll say the number of 30-minute classes, right? Well, we can go, um, we can go by 2s again. Right? Or actually, I think I don't think we'd have to go be able to go by twos. I think we'd have to do more. And the reason is think about how many how many half hour classes can you get in one week if you just do half hour classes? Well, you could get 40, right? So we're gonna have to we're gonna if we do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty. Eh, actually it might fit. So if we go two, four, six, eight, ten, let's put ten right here. So that's ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, this would be 20 right here, 2, 24, 26, 28, 30, so here's 30 right here, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, so this is 40 right here, all right, so when we go down one over two, all you got to do is, as long as you keep the, the proportion the same, let's go down two and over four, okay, as long as the proportion is the same. Because I, I can't really go down one on this, but I can go down two. So I can go down two and over four. So I'm going to have a dot right here. And then this includes the point on this one. 
So we are going to use um, the solid line this time. And we're going to start here. And we're going to go like this. And it's going to go over to about there. All right? So, uh, so this is my graph, all right? And if you're like, okay, which side do I shade? Um, and it doesn't make sense to you which one. Again, pick a test point. Well, let's pick the origin. The origin is zero, zero. So if I put the origin in, right, that means I have zero is less than negative one half times zero plus 20. So this goes away and you get zero is less than or equal to 20. And, and yeah, that's absolutely. So all of these values in here satisfy this inequality. Right, so any any coordinate pair that's in there satisfies this inequality, and so when they ask us the next question, when they say, "Can the recreation director schedule 25 of the 30-minute classes, and 15 of the 60-minute classes in one week?" So what you can do now, you can figure this out algebraically and put it in and see if it works, but you can also say, "Okay, 25 of the 30-minute classes." So 25 is going to put me if this is 20, this is 22, 24, this is 25 right here. Right, so it's right in between here somewhere, right? So it's somewhere along here. And then it says 15 of the 60 minute classes. Well, 15 is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. So they're telling me this point right here. They're saying, hey, can we do this? Well, it doesn't fall within the part that satisfies the equation. So the answer is no. No, you can't, right? Say no. And then why or why not? You could say um, the point 25 comma 15 is outside the boundary for the inequality, right? So that's that's one explanation. The other explanation is to do an algebraic explanation, which is just go use, use these values and say, is 15 less than or equal to negative um, one half times, what is it? Oh, it's 25. No, yeah, why? I did that right. So negative one half, 25 plus 20. Right, so is 15. So this is going to give me what 12 and a 12 and a half, right? So we'd have 15 is less than or equal to negative 12.5 plus 20, which is um, going to be 7.5, and 15 is not less than 7.5. So you can see that that's a false statement. So two different ways to kind of look at it and try to figure it out, but they should both get you kind of the same place. I think the visual representation, honestly, is the way to go, but you can do this if you just want to check your work. So I hope that made sense, guys, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you at the next lesson.